But abundant living is really, we get to live abundantly through God's ability working on the inside of us. You know, so many people have had goals, but yet, I don't know how many of you have had goals, but you haven't achieved the goals because you've been hindered by a lack of your own ability. And a lot of people, and you won't never say that, but in this time, our own ability only gets us so far. Yeah, that's that's right. we, we get hindered by lack of our own ability. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if we knew how to make a billion dollars, we'd all be billionaires. That's right. <laughs> but because we don't know how, we're hindered by lack of our own ability. It's not just a lack thing. It's, it's a skill thing sometimes. Sometimes we just don't have the skill. We don't have the ability. We don't have... We don't know what to say, when to say it, how to say it. We don't know what to do, when to do it, how to do it. If somebody, I mean, if somebody needs a heart transplant, I mean, when it comes to my own ability, I can't help them. And they don't want me to help them. Well, sir, I've never done this before, but would you just hold still? <laughs> No, I haven't done this, but I didn't spend a night in holiday in. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's, we have limits in our own life. And many times we face failure because of the lack of our own personal ability. But here's the question. Did you know that God's power works best in weakness? Yes. yes. That's what the Bible says. That's right. It says, my power works best in weakness. And, and we, today we're going to talk about and discover God's, how to access God's unlimited power to overcome our own personal limitations. You don't have to be limited by your limitations when you're in Christ. I'm not a back surgeon, but I just did back surgery this morning. Hallelujah. I've sat down with, and, and across the way, God has organized me, I've sat down with huge leaders. I've sat down with multi, multi, multi millionaires. I mean, people that, that have done deals where their company brings in a billion dollars a year. And I've sat down with them, and I know nothing about their business, and yet, I sit down and God has used me to counsel them and tell them how to run their business and what to do. And while I'm doing it, my knees are having fellowship one with the other. <laughs> because I don't have a clue. And yet, even though I'm limited, God is unlimited. That's right. And as I yield to Him, His ability begins to flow through me. And then it's just like... Honey, come over here and listen to this. Everybody come over here and listen to this. And they're all just like, praise the Lord. I've been spoken to people. And then the very next day, they negotiate, go negotiate a deal. Or we just negotiated a deal. And it's going to bring in a billion dollars a year from now. That really happened. Amen. Or I'm sitting down and here's a leader that calls me. And the guy's got hundreds and hundreds of churches and a very big mega church himself and calls me and says, I don't know what to do, Nick. Can you help me? And I'm sitting here, you know, and it was that particular time we've probably had, I mean, if it wasn't, I mean, the angels packed out the house, but the chairs seemed empty. <laughs> and, and I was pretty much, I was struggling a little bit with my pride. So do you have pride? Of course, we all die to our pride daily. That's right. My grandfather said the problem with the living sacrifice is it tends to crawl off the altar once in a while. <laughs> and on yeah. pastors, Monday morning, sometimes the living sacrifice crawls off the altar and tries to, you know, you have a bit of trouble with your flesh. And so I had this thing. I was, at the time, struggling a little bit with, Lord, I thank you. Give me patience right now. In Jesus' name. 
And so at that time, this guy calls me with this huge mega ministry, Nick, can you help me? And I'm thinking, well, you obviously didn't come to my church last Sunday. <laughs> but all of a sudden, the Spirit of God kicked in, and I began to advise and counsel and speak to this leader and tell him exactly what he should and should not do. And he applied the principles and had great success. And that's happened over and over and over. I don't have a clue. I've never been a leader of hundreds of thousands of people. I've, there's things that I've never done. I'm limited. I don't have the ability to counsel people that, that have businesses on the level of millions and billions of dollars. I don't have that level. I spoke to, I've spoken to medical doctors and they said, you should be a medical doctor. No, I shouldn't be. Because it wasn't me. It, it, was, it was God's ability working through my limited ability. He's unlimited working through my limited. Yeah. People say, oh, you're so wise. No, really not. <laughs> but it's His wisdom in me, operating through me, that confounds the wise. Yes. I've had two people talk to me recently that they were told when they were young children that they were backwards and retarded. Joan Hunter is one of them. Yeah. That was here, gave us two of the greatest weekends. Yeah. Written books. <laughs> and then there's another person that's got, in fact, it's the one that, that they went and did the billion dollar a year deal. That when he was young, they called him retarded. And people rejected him, and he was actually in a school for retarded, backward children, learning disabilities. And today he's got several companies. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. So, I mean, there's people that, that just the world gives up on. Yeah. You have limited ability, and yet God is able, first of all, He's able to heal you, and He's able to raise your IQ level. But I'm not even talking about your IQ level being raised. I'm sure those people, their IQ level has been raised by now. But I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about it regardless, even if you're a genius, you still don't know how to walk on water. Unless it's frozen. <laughs> but you can't just go walk around Kaneohe Bay on the water. You don't know how to do it, but Jesus does. <laughs> So it doesn't matter how intelligent you are, there's things that your intelligence, you're, you're still, even if you're the smartest person on earth, you are still limited, and God is unlimited. Yes. You cannot feed thousands and thousands of people with a couple of fish and a couple of loaves. But God, through you, can do it. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so I want to stir you up this morning, family. Many times we live according to our own ability. We know what our limitations are. Yeah. I've been for job interviews before. And, they, and people say, well, do you know your strengths and do you know your weaknesses? <laughs> well, please tell me your strengths and tell, you my, tell me your weaknesses. And then I'm, yeah, I know my weaknesses, I know my strengths. And then they hire you on that basis. They say, well, good, you're, you're honest about your weaknesses. I know what my weaknesses are and I know what I cannot do. But praise God, I'm not limited by that. And neither are you. Yeah. Every one of you is able to function and it's going to be required of you this year to do what you cannot do in the natural. Yeah. By His power yeah. and His ability working through you. Yeah. Hallelujah. So to, to the extent that you lean on your own ability... To that extent, your success will be limited. And to the extent that you lean on His ability, to that extent, you'll have great success. 
Now, when you came forward, there was a little voice inside my head that said, man, you're going to embarrass yourself in front of all these people. I mean, it's, it's there. It's, it's called the flesh. You don't know how to do what you're just doing. Everybody, I mean, thousands of people are watching you right now. Everybody's watching, and there's that little, and I have to say, no, you know what, I'm not, I do not lean upon my own understanding. I agree with you, devil, I don't know how to do this, but he knows, the Lord knows how to do it, and it's not going to be through my ability, it's going to be through his ability. And as soon as I tapped into his ability, there was no more question. When Jesus encountered the devil, the only thing he had to do was, I mean, he just walked into the area where the devil was, and the devils actually said, we have to go, please, can we go here instead of there? Can we please go into the pigs? He didn't even say, you have to leave, when they were already starting to negotiate. <laughs> when you walk in God's divine ability, the principalities and powers of darkness will begin to try to negotiate where they have to go. Yeah, yeah. Financial bondage, depression, fear, all of those things will begin to negotiate. Can I go into this tree? Can, can I go into that? Can I go into that? And, and you just say, no, you have to go, go into the very, very deep sea. <laughs> Be cast into the depth of the sea. Amen. And you get to just tell them where to go. See, in God's ability, you don't have to make anything happen. Yeah. You get to watch it happen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Yeah. How many of you can testify that you've tapped into that already and that you have walked in God's ability already in your life? Yeah. Praise God. So you know what I'm talking about. There's times where you just you don't know what to do and God just, yeah. His power came on the inside of you and you said, wow, how did, I, how did yeah. that happen? <laughs> Let's look at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20 of the Amplified Bible. It says... Now to him who is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly more than we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams, according to his power that is at work within us. Hallelujah. To him who is him, Jesus. To Jesus, who is able to carry out His purpose in us, in the world, His purpose. To Jesus, so in other words, it's not your responsibility to carry out His purpose. He is going to carry out His purpose, but it's going to be through you. To Him who is able to carry out His purpose and do super abundantly more than we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, or dreams. Yeah. Now I want you to sit and wonderful. Just sit for a little bit and think. What have I ever dreamed? What, the Lord's not talking about that. It's beyond what you're able to dream. Yeah. What have you ever asked for? You've asked too small. It's beyond what you've asked. So we look at this super abundantly more that we dare ask. In other words, <clears throat> if I came up to you and I said, Kelly, I dare you to ask, where do you want to live? <laughs> if I dare you and you ask, you've missed it because you've got your shot too low. Wow. <laughs> That's what the Lord's saying. <clears throat> what you dare ask or think infinitely beyond, that's infinity, infinitely beyond your greatest prayer, hope, or dream. So if you've hoped it, if you've dreamed it, if you've prayed it, 
Go past whatever you prayed for, whatever you hoped for, whatever you dreamed for. Go past and keep going until infinity. And then that's what we're talking about. So in other words, I mean, God is trying to say, take the limits off. He says, to him who is able to carry out the purpose and do super abundantly more than all that we dare ask to think infinitely beyond our greatest prayers, hopes, and dreams, according to his power at work within us. 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 So therefore, even though you are limited, He is unlimited, and the gauge is His power that is at work. He says that He uses the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. Because it's His power at work within. When I spoke to the wealthy person, business person, it was His power working in me. When I spoke to the minister, leading hundreds of thousands of people, it was His power at work within me. Yeah. His power at work. You know what? Number one, that should get you excited. Yes. But number two, it should take the pressure off. Yes. Because it's not, you see, it's not about your ability, it's about His ability. Yes. Do you know, and I've, I've meditated on this before, sometimes the greatest hindrance that we face as Christians is not our weakness, but our strengths. Yeah. When you know that you have ability in something, the temptation is there to, to, to lean on that ability. Yeah, it's true. When you know that you're able to to perform something, you feel like you've got some wisdom or some knowledge in an area, that could actually, it could become your greatest hindrance. And it will become your greatest hindrance if you start drawing off of that. Somebody talked to me the other day, and we were having a discussion about the presidential elections coming up. And we were just having a discussion, and you know, we were talking, we were going through the different candidates, the different parties, but some of the different things that are happening, and just having a discussion. And so this person said to me, well, okay, we've had this discussion, so who are you going to vote for? I said, okay, well, it was fine for have, us to have this discussion, but I'll tell you what I do when I vote. I go in. And I pray in the Holy Ghost. And I say, Lord, show me who to vote for. And show me if I should vote. And some people say, well, you have to vote. Because if you don't vote, then it's a vote for the other guy. I've got news. I don't have to do anything. (laughs) If Jesus was put in a situation where he had to vote for... You know, for Herod or for Pilate, <laughs> I think he might pass the vote. That's right. And yes, a vote that wasn't cast for Herod might be one, you know, for Pilate, you know, whatever. I don't see Jesus. He said, you know what, I think I'm just going to preach the gospel. <laughs> and I have, in the past, there have been times, there's one time where I went to go vote, and the Lord said, don't vote. I said, Lord, why? And he just said, you know what? I'm not leaving you to vote. And besides, yeah, you're going to vote for somebody, then you need to be, if they come in power, then you're responsible. I said, okay. I didn't vote. And I didn't tell anybody because people, I'll tell now, it's it's a long time away. But that's not, so in other words, you vote according to his power and work within you. So therefore, even though you have figured out in your head you know, maybe the lesser of two evils, or maybe 
come on, this person really is what I feel America needs. And you study this and study that. That's according to your own power, your own ability, your own wisdom. Yeah, right, it's true. When it comes right down to it, I mean, if every Christian would just say, you know what, it doesn't matter what it looks like on paper, right. everybody can be led by the Spirit. Yeah. Every yeah. single person. Even a Christian that's one day old can be led by the Spirit. Yeah. And if you stop and ask the Lord, Lord, number one, what should I do? How should I do it? When should I do it? And when I do it, let it be by your power at work within me, not by my emotions or head knowledge. Or If every Christian did that, man, the nation would be in a better place. Yeah. <laughs> He might have you vote for the most ungodly person that you could ever find and they get born again a week later after they become president and turn the nation right side up. Right. Paul was a murderer and a persecution, persecutor of Christians and if there was a vote that Christians could cast during that time, one person that they would not vote for is Saul, later named Paul. Yes. All they knew was to stay away from him. <laughs> and yet he wrote more of the New Testament than anybody else. Yep. And God used him mildly, mildly, mildly. Yes. Our understanding is limited. Yes. God's understanding is unlimited. Yep. Our ability is limited. Yep. God's ability is unlimited. Yep. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. If we try to solve problems, I mean, we do it in our limited ability. God does it in His unlimited ability. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. The right word, the right time with it, God's anointing on it. Yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Each and every one of you has got the Lord living on the inside of you. <clears throat> and He wants to, He wants to touch people through you. He wants your hand to be His hand extended. Yes. He wants you to show people that have never been loved what it is to be loved. He wants you to, to lay hands on people. I began laying hands on people when I was still... I mean, I, I, I can remember way back. But I remember 18 years old in a secular job. And, my, and working, and there was a big old, my foreman, he walked in, he was a big old, probably six foot six, massive big guy, cursed like a sailor. <laughs> and just seemed like he had, you know, if, if, if anybody told him that he was a Christian, then he might just, you know, persecute you and do bad stuff. He was just like that kind of a person. And, I, and he walked in one day and, and he was holding his head and just he described his headache in a way that I can't share it today. <laughs> it was a very, very vivid description. Very colorful. Very colorful language. We were out in the parking lot. And I knew, I mean, the Holy Spirit just was on me. I knew what I had to do. And I was just, I mean, I was... Yeah, I was on my knees, we're having fellowship. I said, oh, what am I going to do? So, I just said, sir, with all due respect, do you mind if I pray for you? And he just gave me a glaring look. And I said, Jesus loves you, and you don't have to have that headache. Jesus wants to heal you today. I'm going to pray for you, and your headache's going to go away, and you'll be completely healed. Is, well, if I let you pray for me, and then went into some other colorful language, better. <laughs> I put my hand way up. <laughs> Just hit me in the parking lot. <laughs> and I kind of prayed with one eye open. <laughs> in the name of Jesus, be healed. And it's like, it's like an angel just went... Boom, punched him right in the forehead and felt like, because he, as big as he was, 
Shaboom! We went straight down in the parking lot, fell so hard in the parking lot, and just laid there, dead like somebody who was dead. I thought, okay, I've killed him. <laughs> and he just laid like that, and and for a long time didn't move. It felt like hours, it was probably seconds. And then he slowly opened his eyes and kind of went like this, and he sat himself up. I said, headache's gone, his eyes filled, filled with tears. And he just all of a sudden that he had an encounter with God right there. And I said, Can I leave? Can I pray a prayer with you? I prayed a prayer, led him to the Lord. <clears throat> right in the pocket. <clears throat> I mean, His power at work within you. Yeah, Unlimited power. Amen. I've never experienced anything like that before. I, I don't really care to experience it again. <laughs> <laughs> it's much more fun telling the story than having to do it. Sometimes there's things that God wants you to do that do, I mean, they, they, it, it just your flesh would be just like anything but that. Because your flesh is looking at its own ability. I will tell you, after that, all of a sudden, boldness rose up in me, and I was looking for anybody else with a headache or sick or anything else. I mean, are you feeling okay today? <laughs> Jesus, the healer, I'm going to pray for you. Wherever I went, I mean, boldness rose up. And that's what it does. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The, the Holy Spirit has an assignment or several assignments for each of you this week. Hallelujah. John, can you come up and just, the rest of you, can you just stand for a second if you would?